Hi, Dr. Mike Carberry here, and I have a special guest with me today, Bobby Palmer, Dr. Bobby Palmer. Uh, Bobby is going to tell us, if you don't know who he is, you should know who he is. He's probably the reason that I've been appearing on your uh, laptops and iPads all over the country, and uh, that's the guy who does it. So we're very, <laughs> very glad to have Bobby Palmer here. Bobby, how are you? Hey, great. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Um, I just wanted to talk to you. You have an interesting background, and before we get into marketing, which is the topic we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. you're also a chiropractor. Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, how you got involved in chiropractic, how marketing affected your, your practice. Sure. So uh, my background originally, I was an exercise physiologist, and I was doing my master's program at Oregon State, and a chiropractor had sponsored my running. And if you're watching, Doc, thank you so much for that fork in the road. But uh, it was wild because I had been at a plateau, I had been running 100 miles a week, and nothing had changed. But all of a sudden, within a month or so of being adjusted, my performance just started taking off. I ran times that I only dreamed of, and it literally just freaked me out. So I, I was blown away that that doctor had the skills in his hands that absolutely changed my body, changed my life. And I wanted to be able to do that for other people. And so whenever I was in his practice, everyone would, that would show up there was happy, so excited about life. And I was blown away because in most doctor's offices, people were like sick or, or ill or being rolled into a doctor's office. And it was completely different in that environment. And I knew right then I couldn't go back. I wanted to go and do what he was doing. And so that kind of shaped my future path. Wow. That's a, that is quite a, an exciting story to be able to apply it to a sport and mathematically or, or systematically see an increase in your performance. Oh yeah, it was charted, charted everything, it was wild. Yeah, so that's pretty amazing. There's no doubt the chiropractic made that fork. That's work. right, that's actually hard evidence. Um, yeah. So tell me, you also have a very good knack, first of all your practice when you, yep. when you got out of school was phenomenal and the numbers I'm going to ask you to explain that to us because some people it's just they can hardly even wrap their head around it. So tell us about that but tell us how marketing affected that. Sure. Well, people thought I was crazy because I went to one of the most chiropractic dense cities per capita. And there was literally, if you're in line at a coffee shop, there's probably two other chiropractors in line with you. There's just chiropractor on every corner. And so much of the public had already experienced chiropractic. But with what I had experienced and through some of the mentors I had in school, I wanted to have more of a vitalistic practice. I wanted to enhance people's lives. I didn't realize that I could actually market to somebody that had neck pain or back pain or any kind of aches, I was there to just to enhance life. And so kind of the, I basically had to create a whole new wrapper on a timeless product of chiropractic. And so I wanted to figure out a way of basically getting to the public and, and invite them to experience something, this, this message they'll probably never have, be exposed to again, because there's, again, there's not a lot of chiropractors being really progressive and trying to get out there and market to all the public and I needed to crack into that public to get them to experience again. Again, my city, a lot of people had experienced chiropractic, but maybe it wasn't the right message. They didn't have a vitalistic approach or it was more energy levels versus actually application of what I was doing, which was manual adjusting. And right. so basically I just had to reinvent the wheels, what I felt like for marketing. So, so um, tell us your background. First tell us the type of marketing you're, you're sure. mostly interested in, and then tell us how you got involved in that. Sure, so I, I guess, it's interesting because actually I hated chiropractic marketing. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be going to screenings and go to the mall every weekend. And that's good what I was taught in school. I'm sure most of the people listening to this, that's what they were taught in school as well. And I was really not excited about doing that. And I thought, well, why do I have to do that? There's people all over my city that are doing these different, they're, they're walking in different neighborhoods, they're experiencing different services. Why are those other shops and, and retail centers and services, they're not at the malls every weekend doing screenings or, or introductory services. And so why don't I do something that's more like these mainstream businesses do? And so I, I started experimenting with the marketing and actually I was, a, I was a client of Chiropractic Business Academy. And when I started to apply some of the tools they're teaching me, the practice was expanding fast. And so I actually had hired uh, two adjusting doctors instead of just one, I hired two. And so now I had two mouths that I needed to be. I needed to basically bring them more new patients because I had these 
two specialists, that's all they're going to focus on. Didn't need to be doing any hiring, firing, marketing, any of that. Just needed an entire focus just on delivering amazing service. And I had amazing adjusting doctors that I brought on, but I needed to bring in a new patient. So, so I really had to confront how can I get out there and invite more people to experience our introductory services. And that's where I had this aha moment that it was a game. And so I found that I absolutely loved the game of inviting people to the to office and how can I speak a certain language or go to a certain crowd or go into businesses or approach them a certain way that was different than all the other hundreds of chiropractors have been doing, knocking on the chiropractic or the corporate doors of trying to get into to businesses. I just reinvented it to go through the back door or the right. side door. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but just so our listeners understand, how big in numbers was your chiropractic office? So it averaged 400, 425 patient visits every single week. That's a big office. Um, I was told one time that only 20% of chiropractors ever see more than 200 visits in a week. So that puts more than double that. That's a big office. Sure. That's a real big office. Yeah, and, and also just, I mean, where we were, I'm not boasting my numbers at all, but that my mission was to help. I, I knew that at 400, 425, that I would indirectly be influencing everyone in my city whether it was just because the person that we were serving was gonna have more energy levels, they're gonna have a better attitude, they're gonna be out of pain and more active with their friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, their kids. And so that was gonna titrate throughout the entire community and if we hit that number, it was like the, the overall goal. And so I was just driven to do that. And I, th I think all chiropractors just need to realize that it has to be purpose first, and so that's where it came from. It wasn't about the numbers at all. I agree with you. Uh, my my practices have been built on purpose first, and uh, you know I had a similar practice, and it was all about getting people well and getting the message of chiropractic out. Um, so tell me, how did you go in the back door of these businesses, and why did you target businesses? You know, it, it's, uh, one thing I learned is that you can't have all of your eggs in one basket, and so just from other practices that were in part of the consulting group, I would see where they would put all their efforts or their specialists in one area, and if that ever dried up or something had happened to that source, suddenly the practice was in, in dire straits. Right. And so, just looking at all the opportunities that I had in my area, I just saw that the easiest, I wanted to find this qualified demographic. It was like the low-hanging fruit. That I knew that where they lived, so I knew they lived to work locally. I knew that they had a full-time job, and if we were there for some type of introductory service or screening, that I would be able to identify if they had a valid health concern. Right. And so corporations probably accounted for a good, at least half of my new patients every single week. And I mean, for nearly a decade, I would maintain 20 new patients every single week that arrived that were qualified. Maybe right. there was 25 that arrived, but out of all of them, 20 of them on the average were qualified where they were 25 years old or had a full-time job, lived to work locally, and had a valid health concern. Right. So you knew who your market was. Yes. And you knew exactly where they were. Yeah. Yeah, we do similar things. So um, <laughs> good. If you're not identifying your market, you should. I have a lot of yes. people tell me, oh, I have too much Medicare. There's too many Medicare in my area. And it's really not that. It's just that their marketing goes towards Medicare. Um, yep. Nothing wrong with treating Medicare patients, but if you wanted to change that demographic a bit, sure. you, you would go, to, obviously, if you go to where somebody works, there's not many Medicare people there. Yeah, and I found, uh, actually I actually had done this analysis uh, for you docs have been in practice for a while, you may have heard of the Enphase software, that's the one I had started with, and I was able to do a reverse analysis of everyone that was already interested in coming to my office or the, the, the patrons that were more likely to start care, and it was that 37 to 47 year old professional female. And so from that point on, I had this aha moment, like, well, actually I'll do the colors and the design and the, the language where those people like to hang out. And so I looked at the spas they go to, the nail salons, the, the hair salons, the boutique shops that they went to, and what were the colors, what was the messaging, what attracted them to those places. And so I, if I were to already create, uh, invite those people into my practice, if I were to do these things, it would create a super magnet for them. And I wouldn't just do that, but it would attract a whole sphere around it, but it made it even easier for those people to find us and right. make them, help them participate as we, well we as did We did similar things. We actually identified who we were attracting into our business. We came up with females 35 to 55. 
Okay. And uh, <laughs> we, it's not, when you target market like that, you're not saying you're not going to accept anybody else. Absolutely. You're just saying you're going to spend your dollars on those people because you have the highest chance of return from those yes. dollars. And then let those females drag their husbands in yep. for care. That was exactly our plan. And their coworkers and their neighbors. Yeah. yeah. So then how did you actually get into these businesses? You know, uh, it was so many different ways. Um, now the, one of the partners at the Chiropractic Business Academy and Business Academy, uh, we teach about 35 different ways of getting into corporations, getting into businesses. But initially, I had to reinvent the way of creating some type of employee betterment program. And so whether it was an employee appreciation day or a lunch and learn lecture, or if it was ergonomic screening, just many different ways that would go in and approach, but I would have to find a decision maker. And the way we did it, it was, I mean, it was more of our training, we go through it in detail, but it's basically finding how we can be an extension of their arms to create employee betterment. Some type of opportunity we could give to them that was exclusive for their employees or it felt like uh, something their full-time employees would be entitled to. And so uh, just by leveraging that kind of feel, we were able to create an inviting atmosphere where it was no brainer for them to come to our office just to check out the services. Right, right. And we'd be invited to those companies to provide an introductory version of that at the businesses. Right, right. So you mentioned Chiro Chiropractic Business Academy, and you're one of the owners there. Yep. Um, so tell us how what how your involvement in that group escalated. Sure. I mean, it was funny because I love to adjust. It's one of my favorite things. Again, that chiropractor that had turned me on to chiropractic, being able to have those skills in your hands and be anywhere, be on a trail in the mountains and still be able to deliver an adjustment to turn the power on, that's a gift. And so I absolutely love to adjust. But as I put in more and more of the business technology I was learning from the consulting group that I found that I love, I absolutely love to adjust, but I love to create just a hair more. And so I put all my beans, all my energy towards the create side. And so by putting in the, the executive systems, I quickly had a staff driven practice. I was pushed out of the office. I was literally on my, my roof deck in my house, still working 50 hours a week, but creating. It wasn't do, the doingness of the day-to-day -day operations is right. more week, week planning. I'd be mountain biking, but still thinking about the office. How can I expand it? How can I create a new marketing piece? Right. But I was looking for my next game, and so my next game was actually to find some other chiropractors that had amazing adjusting skills, but were terrible business people. And I wanted to go in and create a partnership where I would buy into their practice just with my knowledge, and then over a five-year period, they would earn it out, earn my shares out, but I would get 100% of of the growth on top of where they were at. They might get a 10% increase each year, but as I was developing a, a system for that, then I had the opportunity, I got invited to become one of the partners at CBA, and I couldn't think of a, even a, a better purpose than that, where I could help chiropractors do what I was doing across the nation so that they all could flourish and help a ton more of the community so we can make a much bigger influence. In right, the right. Um, yeah, it's interesting. A lot of things you're saying is uh, triggering triggering things in my career that I did and the way I thought. And it's funny how we think the same. You know, Michael Gerber, uh, author of The E-Myth. Yes. And um, I'm sure you read that book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I read many my favorite of those books. books. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he said it that you have to have spent, no matter what your business is, you have to have time that you spend in your business mm -hmm. and, and on your business, more importantly. And, and basically the gist of what he teaches is the more you spend time on your business, the less you're going to be able to spend time in your business. Yes. Um, and that's a concept a lot of people don't fully get. You have to. It's a hard give, lesson. You have to give those duties yeah. away if you're going to grow. And you have to. That's how you get bigger. Sure. And that's what I see with a, a lot of chiropractors. They want to hold on to that because, I mean, honestly, they they are the best at doing it because they know what the end product is. At least initially, they really are specials in it. So every aspect of it, and it's, it's hard to let go of this. I remember the first time I, I was letting go of the adjusting. I'm like, wow, this is my baby. I have this toolbox of, of skills and to give another chiropractor now the responsibility to do that was right. like, that was the hardest one to let go but as soon as I did it well, was you, like the greatest gift the thing you have to do is you have to have systems created to hand off those duties no matter what the duty is yes. if you have a good system written you know they might not be able to get exactly the same result you got but then you'll be surprised someday somebody gets a result that you didn't get and you're like wow yeah. and that's I, what I, I found and the, that's actually toolbox is different if their experience what brought them to chiropractic they put a lot of attention and intention on developing those skills, which it might not exactly match my toolbox, might not match your toolbox, right. but I found that too. That's yeah, so that, that's the, actually the, uh, 
the thing that happens when you expand your business, and that's that's a good thing. So yes. tell me a little bit about the changes in marketing you've observed in the, well, you've been a chiropractor for how long? Uh, 14, 15 years. So in, the, in your career, especially in the last five, 10 years, what kind of changes are you seeing in marketing? What trends? I guess 17 years. Wow. You're older than you <laughs> thought. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably the biggest difference I've seen is now it is so much easier to get your message out than it ever has been before because it's digital marketing. Uh, one of the things that I found is probably the most important component of marketing is having, as I mentioned before, not having all your eggs in one basket, but having, I call them marketing Legos. And so if you've ever built those Lego buildings, yeah. like you have all the foundation, it's having at least eight marketing Legos in place. I mean, a bigger practice may need more, but that insulates you from change, insulates you from industries closing, but you're always able to diversify your new patients. Uh, it's now easier than ever to have more of those Legos in place because of the digital opportunities we have where right. it's like being online, so being in the search results. Uh, one thing I teach that's crazy important right now that's easy to, to dominate on is Google Maps. Because, I mean, if you want somebody searching for you, they're looking for a local service, then the Maps result is going to pop up. And if you're not in that top three, then you're unheard of. And so uh, instead of even just ranking on the internet, ranking on Google Maps, that's huge. And so that's, right. but that's just one little Lego to have in place, but that didn't exist when I started practice. Right. So there's a lot of digital ways, but I'm also seeing that people have abandoned some of the, the, the old school ways, like postcards. Yeah, we, we've seen uh, postcards as a way to, to liven up your internet presence because people aren't expecting to get stuff in the mail anymore. Yeah. And in fact, if you look, the stack of mail in your box is getting smaller. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when you get something now, it's like, You're oh, surprised, that? yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's revitalized that as a tool. So yeah, we do the same thing. We mix it up. And yeah, really I saw you guys uh, have oversized postcards, too, yeah, which that super stands out because now maybe I'll still get some four by six postcards, but suddenly if you get this six by nine or even an eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14, well, it's like, on what? A, working on one that's, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, every door direct mail, they'll deliver right. it. That's right, that's right. <laughs> okay, so... Um, what marketing would you recommend, especially like a new chiropractor? Somebody getting, somebody, let's not limit it to new, because I know there's, I know what there's going to be people that watch this that are going, this is my extent of using the internet, is sure. watching a video of these two guys. <laughs> but, and sure. it scares people. It scares people my age. I, you know, I'm 57 and sometimes it's like, I don't know how to do that, but I know I can hire people that know how to do it. Yep. So what advice would you give a chiropractor, a new chiropractor, an old chiropractor in marketing? Number one would first be to look at where your new patients have been coming from. Because, again, again, with the Lego analogy, you want to see which ones have already been producing, and you want to solidify those. You, if you don't have a recipe in place, like you mentioned Gerber, he's always talking about systematizing something that you have in your practice so that you can pass it to somebody else to run. But you can't do that if it's all in your head. And so for that marketing Lego that's really producing well for you now is really documenting how it works so it's a recipe that someone else can repeat. Because if it's already been working for your practice, you never want to take that out, solidify that, and put more beans towards it because that's producing results. And then looking at the other things that have been producing new patients for you, if there's something that you can reinforce to get a better result, do that next. Uh, then you can start piloting some other things. Like uh, initially, I recommend that everyone have some type of package of introductory services that they offer. Um, I know with medical integrated offices, you don't necessarily want to give away uh, too much for free or uh, uh, like a, uh, I don't know, what would be something that like a... a what we give away is a free consultation. So consultation would be great Or example. a free postural evaluation on a computer. Okay. But we never give away free exam, free x-rays. Never, okay. never, never. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. But the, for chiropractors, if you have some type of introductory service, if you just go the old way of saying, free chiropractic checkup, and that's it. That's, that drum's been beating for 40, 50 years. And so, oh, this is kind of a crazy story too. I found out my great grandmother was one of the first chiropractic graduates of, of Cleveland. Did you know that? No. <laughs> you didn't even know, wow. No, that is crazy. I actually got her, her certificate, it's wild. She was one of the first graduating classes of Cleveland. So you had no idea about that? No. See, I, I don't think I have any chiropractors in my I had family's no idea history. Either. <laughs> I would be, that would blow my mind if I found it. <laughs> yeah, so that was a, just a side note there. It was a wild discovery, so it's in the blood. Okay. But, uh, so back to this, 
I would then find like what is something that you can pilot that you're able to see if it's going to get a result. So initially, I want to have that package of services that, again, if you just had free x-ray, everyone's been saying that, but if you have it as this mystery uh, package of services, almost like a spa experience. Again, we both want to track that 37 to 47 year old professional female. So why not create, uh, includes a consultation, chiropractic evaluation, followed with report, as well as something they can identify with. So if you have massage services or you have something like that available, that's followed by a gift card loaded with 20 minutes of massage or a gift card loaded with a free chair massage or again standing on the, the shoulders of some giants that they may already identify with in your community, a like gift card loaded with your favorite Jamba Juice drink. And again, it's just, we always talk about this at the at CBA, it's just the icing on the cake, but it feels like this package, this boutique service um, bundle. Right. And it's much different than come in for a free chiropractic exam. Right, which a lot of people don't even know yeah. what that means. So the first thing I do is, what is your package? What could you offer? If you have a local business, uh, like a, in Colorado, there's one called Mad Greens, where you could just get a, a gift certificate for $6 towards the, a Mad Green salad. But just having that package changes the dynamic dramatically. And so uh, once you have the introductory offer, then there's so many different ways you can use it. You can use it online, you can use it in any type of Facebook ads or Google AdWords, or if you're going to corporations for full-time employees, maybe you, you beef it up just a little bit for all the full-time employees when you're, you're doing an employee appreciation day or if you're at a health fair. But I think the core thing has to be in place first is having your package so that it, it, it feels like this wealth this over exchange that you're giving them. And then, um, I mean, that's what I would start with. And then I think secondly, it would be just looking at what are some of the low-hanging fruit in your area. Like uh, one of the things we just talked about at this last workshop was working with a cause. So possibly finding like a nonprofit that's really proactive in your community or a cause like if uh, here in Florida, if there was a hurricane and a big part of the community was wiped out, there's going to be a lot of causes trying to raise funds for that. Or if uh, Big Brothers and Sisters, they had a building burned down, mm -hmm. they're raising funds for it. And so why not have an exchange in exchange for a 27 or 37 or $47 donation to that cause or to that nonprofit in exchange for that donation, they're getting this package of services. And again, the, the nonprofit or the cause is much more likely to grasp on to, to promote that versus just a free chiropractic or a $27 exchange for a chiropractic exam. Okay. And so, uh, I mean, our, our clients are using that like crazy and it's, the nonprofit or the cause that's promoting it on Facebook, tweeting it out, putting it on the front of their web page, their uh, e-blasting, email blasts are going out to their thousands of supporters, and even if it's a nonprofit, they're sending it out as a, a letter in the mail, and they get discounted rates for that. So this massive promotion armada is happening just because you created a package of services and it's benefiting a, a, a local group. Wow! Wow! I and mean, that'd be something to pilot again. That's just Again, that would just be one Lego, but if you piloted that and it was successful, then find like three or four other groups that every two months maybe you change and work with another group. Do you see any challenges between marketing for a, a just chiropractic office versus an integrated practice? Because you're now working with both types of practices, yeah. right? You know, uh, not really. Just what we mentioned before is because the stature of the medically integrated practice, like you wouldn't want to give them a Jamba Juice gift card. Right, <laughs> right, right. And so uh, just the positioning of it is a little bit different, but it's so wild with the integrated practice, it, whenever a prospective patient's coming in and doing their, their evaluation, and then when they're, they're I guess the, the case manager is coming in, because it also came from the positioning and authority of a, a medical office, they, it's much more likely to start than a chiropractic office. That still blows me away how easy it is to get starts in integrated practice. So the marketing is even easier. So I, I think just doing the, the standard marketing that you would do for a chiropractic office, but then beefing it up so that it, it has less of that grassroots feel right. is the only change that needs to be made. Yeah, because you're going for a different percent. You're going for a different market. You're going for the 90% of people who wouldn't go to a chiropractic. Yeah. So, and the services that you can offer, the screenings are now enormous that you can do. You have a, right. just a bigger uh, birth of, 
of introductory services that you can offer. Condition-based marketing is what we usually use. Is more people are likely to respond to an ad about a problem they have than to come in because they like your services. So, yeah. uh, last question: um, What do you see for the future of marketing in healthcare? Wow, you know, I think right now we're at this, especially with all the the opioid epidemic in the in the headlines. This more than ever, I feel like we're at this crossroads where it, every, like the holistic practitioners now need to really step up and be vocal. Yeah. And so the more dynamic you can be in social media, uh, being more prolific with your advertising, with letters out, postcards out, emails out, having email campaigns, teaming up with other groups, being able to do more press releases, just really being prolific with your, your information is more important than ever because people are realizing that what they learned before, that socialization in the medicine, that wasn't right. It, they, so all of us had taken granted of that when we were young, like, well, the doctor said do this, it must be right. But right. now it's being questioned more than I've ever seen it More before. than I've ever seen it. Yeah. I first started to practice, people were like, I don't care what you do, just fix me. So and now it's, they're coming in educated. Yeah, so they've been pushed off the podium, and now we need to fill that void and be the ones that are filling that with the right information. That's right. Okay, well, I really appreciate you talking. I mean, hey, you're wealth of knowledge, and you, you know, you're unique in the sense that you have this marketing viewpoint on things, which is really beneficial for our clients to hear that. And uh, I was glad, I'm glad we had time to spend with you today and let our, our clients hear Absolutely. what you had to say. Absolutely. Hope you have me back. I will. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, take care, guys.